So we're continuing on with the NFC North. This is the final team. If you have not seen the others, I've got uh, Chicago Bears, Green Bay Packers, and Detroit Lions mock drafts. I'll try to remember to put some kind of a card around here, but you can find it if you want to find it. But um, otherwise, if you are a Green Bay Packers fan and want to keep up with it, please check out the Packernet podcast. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit the little bell notification. Otherwise, let's do this. So today I decided to go with the CBS Sports because it was just nearby and I got to really hurry up because I got to do like four mocks um, very quickly. Um, and I'm rocking the Bonefish Grill shirt. That's what I'm calling it because it seems appropriate, right? It's a bony looking fish. Um, also, the, I, I doubt you guys are going to be upset, but I, I just want to warn you right out of the gate. Full disclosure, I didn't pick the draft order. But our first pick is going to be at 18. Yell at Tankathon, okay? They got a great site. Gives me the ability to go through seven rounds and all the picks you do and don't have. It's, a, it's If you want to do mock drafts, it's very helpful. But we're, we're doing it, and we're picking at 18. But anyways, <laughs> let's get to the first pick. With the 18th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select... Trey Smith, interior offensive line, Tennessee. Pretty straightforward. I don't think there would be really any controversy about it. Um, maybe some bigger type needs at more cornerstone positions like corner um, that you'd rather get as a first round pick. But I think at uh, at the value, Trey Smith is pretty solid. I mean, it depends. I think my board shifted since I last did this mock. But um, the, the value for this guy would be higher than the next best corner, which I think would be early second round pick. So it just didn't really pan out. But the, I mean, look, along the interior, let, let's just assume Bradbury improves to become a, a very good center. And there's some talk that Ezra might kick inside, but even so, I believe that's a temporary solution. And I don't even think that's going to happen, but that would be a temporary solution until eventually he gets kicked outside. So we still need, at the very least, a new right guard and I believe a new left guard. I, I'm, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I want you to get a new left guard either way, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys don't like him, but maybe you do. I, I, there's one of these guys along the offensive line that I remember I mocked to replace. This was probably last year, so maybe it's completely changed, but man, did you guys rip my head off for it. But look, Elfline, Elfline, whatever, he kind of sucks. I think you know that. I'm pretty sure I'm not upsetting you, but either way, and, and and look, it's just based on the scheme, right? Gary Kubiak is a similar to what the Green Bay Packers are running. It's it's a I don't want to say run first because obviously you throw more than you run, but it's everything revolves around the outside zone scheme. Everything is is looks like run first. You're going to run a lot of play action off of that. You know, Justin Jefferson is a really good off the line kind of guy, so it's it's. You know, it's, it's all quick rhythm timing type stuff. And you can't really be your core identity if you don't run the ball well. And, and you've got Dalvin, but I don't know for how much longer. So, I mean, if you don't have a running back and you don't have an offensive line, I don't know how this run first kind of team is going to operate. So maybe I over explained it and it was a relatively simple pick, but we're going Trey Smith, offensive guard out of Tennessee. With the 50th pick in the second round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Tyson Campbell, cornerback, Georgia. Now, I know that you guys went out and got Jeff Gladney. Um, he's a first-round pick, so you guys have high expectations for him, and that's cool. And you do have Mike Hughes, who was also a first-round pick. I, I just, I mean, you lost everybody. Mike Hughes is the only guy that played at least 500 snaps last year. On your at, out of all your cornerbacks, and he played exactly 500 snaps. Otherwise, you've got Holton Hill, who played 168. I just, you know, Cam Dantzler. What, 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 what are we relying on right now? There's just, if nothing else, it's extremely thin. Mike Hughes has proven nothing, and you know, Jeff Gladney was pick 31 overall. Mike Hughes was 30. So there's no guarantee, right? We've seen already. You can pick guys in the first round. It doesn't mean that they're all automatically 
very good. So I'm 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 willing to bet even if Jeff Gladney comes in and is let's just say even the, the best corner in all of football, I still want another corner. I have no reason to believe Mike Hughes is going to suddenly take a step and be a good corner. I mean, the guy couldn't even play. He hasn't played. He hasn't stepped up to be that guy yet, and you guys haven't had good corners in a while. So, anyways, um, Tyson Campbell, the, the only concern I have about Tyson is that he seems to be kind of a, a toolsy guy. In other words, he's got all the pieces, all the tools, but needs some some grooming. Um, and with the lack of real veteran leadership, as well as losing your DB coach to the Green Bay Packers, thank you very much for that, by the way, it's, it's a little bit more of a high-risk situation. We're relying on our ability to coach him up, but he's a good value for where we're picking, and I really wanted to go corner since we missed one in the first round. And so we're going to kind of swing for the fences on this one. With the 82nd pick in the, 2000, in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Tadaryl Slayton, defensive tackle, Florida. Um, it's, it's, first of all, we need help, right? We, we lost Griffin off the edge. Uh, we lost... Well, Pierce, but he's going to be coming back. And obviously, um, Linval Joseph, I'm blanking on names here. It's very early. Um, the, the, the It's going to help us up front. The biggest thing, though, is to Daryl Slayton is listed right here. I don't know what the graphic I just put up says, but 6'5", 358 pounds, meaning he's less of a Linval Joseph and more of a Michael Pierce. So he's not really a compliment where you'll have Michael Pierce as a run defender and then you'll have Slayton as your pass rusher. You're really going to have your edge rusher in Daniil Hunter. You're going to have Pierce and Slayton on the interior just completely shutting down the run. Hopefully we'll find somebody else off the edge. And then what you're going to have is your linebackers that are just going to be flowing and kind of you know, playing clean up a little bit. So we're not going to be generating a lot of interior pressure, which probably is a better compliment. But I just, you know, it's one of those things where it's a really good player at a really good value and we need help there. So I wanted to pull the trigger, but that would be the only real iffy thing. And, and you know, Michael Pierce isn't going to be around forever. So at the very least, it's a additional rotational piece that fills a need that the Vikings felt that they wanted to get, right? They wanted to go out and get a Michael Pierce type of football player. So I wanted to go out and get him the kind of football player that they seem to be looking for, if that makes any sense. But either way, very, very big, dominant defensive line. And um, again, with defensive linemen, we don't, we don't have very many. I don't know what you guys think about like Armin Watts or whatever, who it is you're excited about, but you need several pieces along that defensive line that you're going to be able to rotate. And so Michael Pierce not being able to play at 340 pounds every single snap, you've got situational, right? Sometimes you have both of them. Sometimes you rotate them. Sometimes this, that, and the other thing. We'll see what we get further down the road. But at least for this particular point in time, to Daryl Slayton, defensive tackle, Florida. With the 112th pick in the fourth round via the Chicago Bears of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Marlon Tuipulotu, defensive tackle, USC. So again, you could, you could tell just by the way I was describing it that it was giving me heartburn about the fact that we just got two big guys up front. And so we're going to double down on this. And, and look, it's it's the identity of the Vikings is defense. And I talk about this all the time where whenever we try to get away from the identity right the defense is slowly eroding we're building into the offense we're getting wide receivers and this and that and the other thing it just seems to go south how how, how long did the bears try to improve their offense 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 and they were terrible and then when they finally got back to their identity of let's just build up this defense boom instant instant playoffs right the vikings are a defensive team we, 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 we got to just keep hammering that. I mean, it doesn't mean we have to have a bad offense. The Vikings don't have a bad offense. It's a great compliment. But you got to get the defense going. Don't let this erode. So defensive line, again, we, we've got Pierce. We've got Slayton. Dom, good luck running, right? Dominant up front. Now we add Marlin, fourth round guy, who's a leaner, more of a pass rush type, more of a third down guy. And again, we got the pieces. We can rotate. We can get you know, these two and these two and these two, and depending on the situation, depending on, you know, just rotating guys, keeping them fresh, we're getting a little bit of a crew going here. On top of the guys we've already got who 
can do all of these things maybe not quite as well which is why we're adding more because we want to try to find some that are actually good at their jobs um, and hopefully we can find some of those but again with with two guys back to back we're pretty hopeful that um, we're gonna be get, getting better up front with the 114th pick in the fourth round of the 2021 NFL draft the Minnesota Vikings select Kellen Mond quarterback Texas A&M now it's it's one of those we're looking into it kind of picks you know we're, we're taking a swing because we know it's coming but we're not overly aggressive in you know trading up in the first round or anything although that wouldn't be completely out of line um, Kirk Cousins isn't going to be around forever but the the guys that we have right now for example Sean Mannion and maybe you're a big Sean Mannion fan I don't know but Sean Mannion, Jake Browning, Nate Stanley, I would just assume these are not really serious contenders. So at the very least, maybe we're going to be able to find a guy that doesn't come out in Week 17 and throw two picks, Sean Mannion. Maybe it wasn't his fault, but still, when, when the, the stat line was pretty ugly. So at the very least, we've got a guy that's going to come in and compete to be the backup and be a quality backup in case Kirk Cousins goes down. We've seen it before, right? Guys go down. It's a question of do you have somebody that can come in and fill in the gap for those couple weeks and win you just enough games so that we don't get eliminated from the playoffs because Kirk Cousins is out for four weeks, five weeks, whatever it is. So when he comes back, we're still in contention. So there's there's that element, but then there's still the element of like we're, we're kind of taking it seriously, although a fourth round future quarterback is slim it's right in that range right anything later than a fourth round and it's it's a throwaway and then you know first second round we're kind of getting serious about we need to replace this guy third and fourth is just sort of you know we'll see maybe we get lucky you know maybe you get a russell wilson-y kind of situation it wasn't a fourth round pick i don't think but you know it's possible it's extremely unlikely but maybe i don't know kellen mond with the 117th pick in the fourth round via the Buffalo Bills, so we've had a nice stretch, 112, 114, 117. The Minnesota Vikings select Ronnie Perkins, edge rusher, Oklahoma. So sticking with the defensive front, um, I, you know, I just, I really want to hammer this. But, you know, offensive line and defensive line. Offensive line because it's in need. Defensive line because it's in need, but also extremely important for what it is that we're doing. Not really a whole lot to elaborate on. Um, you know, again, I don't know. I, you, you probably shouldn't go into a draft pick saying it's probably not going to work out. But it's kind of getting iffy, right? Fourth round is kind of that cutoff for being able to find an actual contributor that we can put out on the opposite side of Daniil Hunter. But we got to try. We've got to do something to try to get him a little bit of help. And so that's what we're going to do with Ronnie Perkins in the fourth round out of Oklahoma. With the 146th pick in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Kennedy Brooks, running back, Oklahoma. So a little bit of a maybe more controversial pick. One of the things that I like, when I get to the back end of, of the draft, there's only certain positions I'm even interested in, and those are positions that have a chance of hitting in the fifth and then especially the sixth and seventh round. But running back, there's no question. There, there are several running backs that are mid to late round backs that are doing just fine in the NFL right now, um, Aaron Jones, for example. But the, the, the biggest thing here is, number one, I'm kind of assuming we're moving on from Dalvin, and I really think we should. I know you guys love Dalvin, and rightly so. He's really talented, but and I forget the numbers, but you, you know the guy has hardly played. What is it, like 29 out of 58 weeks or something like that? Um, he's just not worth the money, and, and the fact of the matter is, I think you guys can work fine with a, a committee approach like several other teams do that don't have big high profile running backs that are that are playing for you um and although we've got guys like madison and abdullah and boone abdullah is kind of a throwaway but madison seems to be doing a good job and even boone when he comes in does a good job but but i don't want to pay them either abdullah and boone are also free agents prior to this 2021 draft so if we're gonna have a committee that's fine but we've got Alexander Madison, who's one, and who? Well, maybe we keep Boone, but we bring in an additional player. So we got Alexander Madison, we've got Kennedy Brooks, and we got Mike Boone, and that can kind of be our committee. Madison, we know, can handle it. Kennedy Brooks probably can do something, <laughs> hopefully. And Mike Boone, who, you know, 
And, and again, it's it's a scheme kind of... The only reason Madison and Boone are having any success is because the scheme works. It's because it's just one of those teams where it kind of doesn't matter. Now, they don't have the high-end potential. They're not going to have these big breakaway runs like Dalvin does. But they can they can do it. They can make it work. I mean, I, I remember what it's like. Well, there's no Dalvin. Ha ha, you're going to suck now. Except you don't because these guys come in and they're fine. It's a good scheme. It works. Just get guys that are capable you don't need high profile elite guys that you're going to pay 10 12 million dollars to it's unnecessary especially dalvin no offense but of all the guys no not dalvin no chance it's dalvin <laughs> i'm rubbing it in a little bit with the 158th pick in the fifth round of the 2021 nfl draft the minnesota vikings select Damone Clark, linebacker out of LSU. So I know this isn't going to be a popular pick um, for several reasons. Um, I'll, I'll leave the reasons why you don't like it out and I'll let you fill in the blanks. But it kind of comes down to two things. Um, if he on the starters, right? Eric Hendricks had a phenomenal year last year, but it was kind of one of those where usually you're kind of trending around here and then you get one of these. Maybe he's just going to stay up here, but I, I kind of feel like this is where he's he's going to be but he's he's fine anthony barr on the other hand i please tell me in the comments because i i just i just it's my understanding that pretty much everybody especially vikings fans think that anthony barr is an elite top tier linebacker and i don't know why pff had him ranked 58th out of 92 he didn't grade out well against the run against the pass as a tackler nothing so i'm not enamored with anthony barr now even if Regardless of what you say to that, it's like, okay, well, we've got Cameron Smith, who is having heart surgery, and hopefully he's doing well with that. And he, he looked really good with the very limited amount of snaps that he had. So maybe there's something there, right? Cam Smith was what? He was a fifth-round pick, just like uh, the guy we just picked up. But outside of that, we got Eric Wilson. We've got Ben Gideon. We just drafted Troy Dye. The problem is I don't really believe in any of these guys. I don't know what Cam Smith brings. Uh, we didn't see anything from Ben Gideon. Eric Wilson, I don't think, has been all that impressive. So, you know, maybe it's because we got tried. Th there's a lot of bodies, so maybe it's not super necessary. The problem is I guess I just don't like any of the bodies. So we've got the starters who are kind of getting up in age, and they're locked up till about 2024, but I don't think Barr makes it that far. I think he's going to be gone as soon as the contract. Let's see if I can... I don't have time to get the details right now, but um, I think as soon as it becomes possible. And then the question is, who comes in and fills that spot next to Eric Hendricks? And, and you know, we, we're going to be looking for several linebackers that are going to be able to play. And I just don't know who that guy is going to be. So I'm, I'm just I'm taking a swing and I'm trying to get some better competition in here. Um, maybe I shouldn't have slapped Troy Dye in the face. He's obviously a very talented guy, but. Whatever, I'm getting you another linebacker because I just don't like your linebackers. And finally, you guys got a lot of picks. It's going to be a fun draft season for you guys. With the 178th pick in the sixth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Josh Sills, offensive guard, Oklahoma State. So it kind of just checks all the boxes, right? It's one of those positions that has a shot as a sixth rounder of being at the very least a depth player but also possibly has a shot to come in and compete, right? So we, we've got two interior guys. You know, we could take about as many swings at that as we want, but we got Trey Smith who, I mean, he's starting, right? He's our, our number 18 overall pick. Guess what? Week one, Trey Smith is the guy. But we've also got Josh Sills to come in to possibly compete for that other guard spot. And if nothing else, again, depth is not a, a not important thing. Offensive linemen get hurt all the time. Usually it's for a couple plays or for a game. Hopefully not for an entire season, but you want to be able to have guys that are going to come in. It's one of those things where you don't care about it until you don't have it. And when a, a quality player goes down and you get this other guy that comes in and your your entire fan base just goes, oh, no. And, and you're, you're in big trouble, right? Because the offensive line, you're looking at the weakest link as as good as it gets. Because if, if it doesn't matter if your right tackle's doing a great job, if this guy isn't blocking... Your quarterback's going down. So, um, 
again, Josh Sills is going to come in and compete as a starter. We're not just drafting him as a backup, but I, I do think it's important to be able to have a good stable of, of guys that are going to make sure that, at the very least, get in the way and don't get our quarterback killed so that we can run our offense. That's all I'm asking out of Josh Sills, and we'll see where it goes from there. But anyways, that's it, and um, let me know in the comment section what you thought. We're going to be doing, if, if I can do one a day, which is going to be kind of tricky. Roughly, it's going to be one team mock every... Eh, it'll be a little less than that, but roughly a, a team mock every month. So be sure to get in the comments section. Let me know what you like and don't like so that next time we can kind of refine this and uh, get it done a little bit better. But just kind of exploring the team, not being as well-versed, obviously, as Vikings fans are on the team and trying to see what it is that I would want to do if I were the Minnesota Vikings, plus with my own sort of philosophies, such as don't take quarterbacks and edge rushers and offensive tackles in the 5th and 6th and 7th round and things like that. But um, anyways, again, please subscribe to the channel and check out the Packernet podcast if you want to see what's going on in enemy territory. Otherwise, you folks take care, and I will check you out Nope. I'll talk to you tomorrow.